We want to build a society that is socially, economically and environmentally sustainable. We want to strengthen equality, education and skills. We want Finland to be a country where every child can become anything and everyone can live and grow old safely and happily. We are going to be active in European Union and globally. We want to create stability. The new government starts its work today. I Dear friends, good morning. <laughs> On the occasion of my visit to the United Nations, I am pleased to greet you, the men and women who are in many ways the backbone of this organization. I thank you for your welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to greet members and guests of the General Assembly of the International Exhibitions Bureau. Russia has a long and rich experience of participation in the World Expo movement. We took part in the very first Universal Exhibition in London in 1851 at the Paris exhibition in 1900. Our pavilion won the Calder Gold Medal and Grand Prix. But in all this time, Russia has not hosted the World Expo. Not once. Surely, time has come to change this. We would like to ensure that our children learn to become good human beings with qualities such as compassion, empathy, and respect for nature. These are the main elements of gross national happiness-based curriculum we have in the schools in Bhutan. We are planning to enhance school curriculum with practical lessons on climate change so that every student becomes a climate champion. Mr. President. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Norway is a firm supporter of a rule-based multilateral order. We are a consistent partner in efforts to promote sustainable development, peace and security, and human rights. The world needs strong multilateral cooperation and institutions to tackle global challenges such as climate change, cybersecurity, and terrorism. You did an outstanding job. I know that. You have often lived in the shadow of Melbourne and Sydney. <laughs> this week, you have shown the world what a great city and host you are. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it was a, a terrible news. But let me say one thing first. Uh, we are suffering very much. More than uh, 15,000 Italian lives lost to their dear ones, to our society, to our nation. It's uh, a devastating pain. And uh, in, in these difficult times, I can openly say that American President Trump once more have proven to be Italy's true and loyal friends. <laughs> I'm still on the establishment. But I think that we have to understand what is establishment in our days. Because I think that uh, the most crucial question is uh, from uh, whom interests you are fighting, who want to protect. If we want to protect the labor people, the vulnerable people, then you have to fight, but at the same time you have to try to find alternative paths in order to protect their interests. The invisible enemy that is COVID-19 has brought about an unfamiliar global landscape and unleashed a crisis without precedent. It is the biggest test the world and the United Nations face since World War II. While the United Nations has brought relief and hope, 
to so many countries and peoples around the world. It now finds itself saddled by a virus that has taken many lives. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, as I stand here before you today, I'm reminded that the wise men and women of 1945 displayed a unique capacity to learn from and act on lessons of history. Shaped by the Great Depression and tempered by the carnage of World War II, they established global order through institutions that would provide security and stability for generations to come. Uh, unfortunately, I, I think that the peak is still ahead of us and we will have several thousand, if not more, of the cases. Uh, this is a real earthquake, earthquake also for our economy. Uh, right now we're fighting with the coronavirus pandemic from the point of view of our healthcare system and not letting new cases into Poland. This is why we have uh, introduced as the first country in Europe uh, so-called sanitary border controls. And we are passing through an extraordinary time. The COVID-19 pandemic is confronting us as a crisis of epic proportion. Be it the magnitude of public health crisis, impact on livelihoods and societies or global economic recession, the fallouts of the pandemic have been colossal. We On behalf of Japan and the Japanese people, I offer with profound respect my eternal condolences to the souls of all American people that were lost during World War II. Well, uh, uh, Mr. President, uh, good to see you again. Thank you. And yes, there are uh, issues we want to talk about. Uh, main issue, of course, is Afghanistan, because it concerns the U.S. and Pakistan. And fortunately, we are on the same page. Both of us are interested in uh, peace there and uh, uh, an orderly uh, transition in Afghanistan with the uh, with talks with Taliban and the government. I've been told many times during the last few days that there are very spe special expectations of my speech here today. <laughs> Supposedly, or so I have heard, some expect my speech to pave the way for a re fundamental reform of the European architecture, which will satisfy all kinds of alleged or actual British wishes. I'm afraid they are in for a disappointment. Country. Well, why we should allow to enter our country? We just pursued them and we provided them all, everything what they needed. Why are you asking me this question? You should ask this question to the Myanmar government. It is not our responsibility, it is their responsibility. No, no one is blamed. We need a free and fair trade, for sure. A commercial war opposing the lies is not consistent with our mission, with our history, with our current commitments for the global security. By polluting the oceans, not mitigating CO2 emissions, and destroying our biodiversity, we are killing our planet. You are from Spain? Yes. Which part of Spain? Madrid. Madrid. Yes. 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 Yes.